Hey everyone, this is Nitro. With the new Meteor Strike Destiny summon, everyone should have a Zerida by now if they haven't already gotten one, so I thought I would do a video on how to build Zerida properly. So let's begin, shall we? And the most important thing about Zerida is her talent, Hide and Seek. I'm not going to go over the percentages and details in this video, just to save a bit of time, but what you need to know about it, her talent, is basically it increases crit hit chance and if you're outside of the danger zone of an enemy at the end of her turn, she enters a stealth state. And in stealth, her crit chance and crit damage are both increased even more, she'll take less damage and her mobility is increased. And this stealth state lasts one turn. Okay, The mobility increase is the especially important part. At 3 stars, it's only a 1 mobility increase. At 6 stars, it becomes a 4 mobility increase. So it's because of this mobility increase that it is incredibly important for Zerida to be at 5 or ideally 6 stars for her to be used. Without the mobility increase, she's going to have trouble getting into a combat range. So this mobility increase, yeah. So to use her, she needs to be at 5 or 6 stars. Important note about this is that if you're grinding her shards, unlike a lot of other characters, she only has 5 uh, levels to her gate of fate, which means you can only grind 3 shards for her every day, unlike other characters who can be grinded for 4 shards. So there's going to be quite some grinding to get her up to 6 stars, right? But she's absolutely worth it. In fact, she is the character I'm grinding up right now, but you can see I have a long way to go because I still need 59 shards to get her to 5 stars, then I'll need another 150 shards. So that's 209 shards in total, and that means I still have 70 days to grind for my Zerida to hit 6 stars. It's going to take quite some time. Nonetheless, once she hits 5 stars, I'm going to start using her for PvP. Alright, so we've talked about her uh, talent. Now let's quickly go into her classes. If your Zerida is just going into single class mastery, you don't have the runestones to commit into her, I highly recommend going to Wielder of Alhazard and into Chaos's Chosen. This is her demon class, but the reason to do this branch is so that she gets access to her faction buff, Obliterate. This is the Meteor faction buff, um, and yeah, that pretty much sums it up. So in her demon class, she will have this setup, and you'll probably use the following skills. Obliterate to faction buff, Killing Blow for a single target strike doing 1.4 times damage, and then the one point skill that you have access to, it's just either Smoke or Bloodbath, right? I just pick Bloodbath because on the off chance that I can do additional damage with more attack and defense increase, but you can also choose smoke. It doesn't really matter for this last skill, for this one point skill, in her current state anyways. This is if you're using her as the Meteor Faction buffer. So this would be very useful for Guild Wars. If you're using her as a dark faction damage dealer, then just simply replace Obliterate with Alhazard Bloodthirster. This way, what she would do then every turn is, first turn, activate Alhazard Bloodthirster, right? Next turn, use Killing Blow to kill off a target. And yeah, that pretty much sums it up. So this would be the Zerida that would take out an opponent every time she can first Alhazard Bloodthirster, then use Killing Blow. So she would keep rotating between these, these two skills. Bloodthirster, Killing Blow, Bloodthirster, Killing Blow, endlessly. She'll be able to kill off one target, guaranteed, every other turn as a result. Which is solid, but it's not as good as, let's say, uh, Shuri, who can kill off two targets in one turn, or Leon, who can also kill off two targets in one turn by using Leon as a game. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, Zerida is more PvP oriented in general. Alright, so this would be her skills if she only has one class mastery. What if she has both, okay? Well, if you get the double class mastery, the best skills for her are actually in her ninja and shadow class, interestingly enough. Ninja gives backstab. It's a one point skill, which is quite solid. When attacking, if the target is at 100% hit points, 
you deal fixed damage one time before battle, and this damage is equal to two times the hero's attack value. This skill, Backstab, is basically meant for you to counter any healer that has Shrine Maidens, and as well as countering any flyer, for example, who has less rights. Because before you attack them, they'll take damage, which will deactivate both the both the Shrine Maidens uh, damage reduction, as well as the last rates damage reduction, allowing you to one shot the targets. Okay, but this does at the same time assume that you're attacking a full hit point target. So keep that in mind. If you're already attacking a target that's not at full hit points anymore, you won't need backstab because it, first of all, it won't kick in, and second of all, they won't have that damage reduction, which will let Zerida one-shot them anyways. So, it's a useful skill. Is it absolutely vital for her? That's up for debate. Because in PvP, normally, you're likely to have other targets throwing, you know, AoEs or whatnot to do damage beforehand. So, keep that in mind. Backstab, very useful for PvP, but so is the other one point skill from the Shadow class, Sly Stride. What Sly Stride does is crit chance increased by 10%. And after eliminating an enemy, you gain a chance to move three blocks. So Sly Stride will allow Zerida to attack and retreat, making it a great uh, one point skill. So whether you choose Backstab or Sly Stride is kind of up to you and the Zerida that you plan to play. You know, it's I can't really give you a direct 100% option because both are usable. All right, the la final skill Zerida has is Shadow Raid. Shadow Raid is a direct assault, ignoring enemy guard skills to do 1.3 times damage. This skill is what allows Zerida to very frequently one-shot enemy targets because you can ignore the guard and take out an opponent. So. If you have both class masteries, the most common Zerida build then is it becomes faction buff, right? You have the sh and then you have the ignore guard skill, Shadow Raid, and then your final one point skill is either backstab or slice stride, depending on whether you plan to one shot targets that have, you know, damage reduction or to attack and retreat. So there you go. That is Zerida's skills, and I'm just going to change her back to her normal skill set for me right now. So you can see, Zerida really, 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 if you use her, you need the double class mastery. You can't ignore it. All right, so continuing on then, let's talk about her soldiers. And her soldier boost caps out at this value that you can see right now. 40% attack, 40% magic defense increase, 10% defense, 10% hit points. It's a very, uh, the most important thing is it's a very offensive soldier boost, all about increasing her attack. So that's really all you need to know. The hit point and defense uh, boost is minor, but it's manageable because you should have the stealth state, right? And the stealth state will decrease the damage that you take. So that's what increases her survivability, the stealth state. All right, let's continue on. Soldiers. The soldiers she gets from the training ground are the Undead Knight, the Catapult, and the Mist Dancer. Okay. Zerida, as an assassin, she really wants a crit increase. So her best soldiers are the ones that increase crit chance, which is either Mist Dancer or Bandit. I would say Bandit edges out Mist Dancer for her simply because Bandit also increases her attack, increases the attack value. Right? Whereas Myth Dancer would apply a debuff on enemies after you do a crit hit. This would only apply if they survived. So that's why Myth Dancer would be edged out by bandits. Okay? If you don't have a good uh, assassin and archer training ground, like me, you can use Hellfire Archers for now. You can see, right? My Myth Dancers have significantly less attack. More than 120 around there. 121 less attack which with hero boost would add some more. So that's a huge difference, which is why I'm still using Hellfire Archers. The other nice thing about Hellfire Archers is they deal, after the battle, they deal extra fixed damage to the enemy, and it's a percentage of the enemy's max hit points. 
So if my Zerida does not manage to one-shot the target, the Hellfire Archers may help me finish off that target anyways. So it's a nice transitional unit. But as I said, the final ones would probably be either Bandits or Mistancer, with Bandits probably edging out the Mistancers by a bit. Catapults are more of a fun unit, giving her additional range, but her skills are still stuck at 2 range. So that's why they're purely more of a fun unit to bring along. As for Dark Elf Snipers, they do increase attack value by a significant amount actually, right? Uh, so it, in fact, it gives more attack than like, let's say the Bandits would, but they don't increase the crit hit rate. So that's why I don't really recommend Dark Elf Snipers over Bandits. So yeah, that would be her soldiers. The best ones, Mistancer, you know, best one would probably be Bandit. If you don't have that leveled up, Mistancer, because you probably have Mistancer leveled up from using other uh, assassins. If you don't have Mistancer leveled up, or the assassin in training ground leveled up, by all means use Hellfire Archers, which are actually a demon unit, right? So there we go. That's her, I guess, her best tier 3 soldiers. Now, let's talk about her equipment. And equipment-wise, Zerida is actually quite straightforward. Okay. Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So continue on the, the video, I was not able to get the SSR accessories and gear page to show up for some reason. So I'm running into a little bit of a bug with my program. So I'm just going to continue. I'm going to explain about her gear, Zerida's gear, in-game instead of using the uh, Google Sheet. So, let's begin with Zerida's weapon, shall we? And Zerida's best weapon is very, very obvious. Okay? Her best weapon is the Extreme Magic Bow. Because the effect of the Extreme Magic Bow, which I don't have, is that unit damage is not reduced in melee battles. This means if anything attacks her in the melee, she's going to do damage to them in retaliation. And because Zerida should have such high attack value, she will have a pretty good chance of one-shotting any target that attacks her. And if it's not a one-shot, you know, it'll weaken them enough for a follow-up attack to easily kill off that character. So that's why Extreme Magic Bow is her best weapon and arguably her required weapon. If you don't have an Extreme Magic Bow, well, give her any high attack uh, ranged weapon. That would be... Preferably, it would be a bow of some kind, because bows have more attack value than the assassin knives do. So, for example, a Bloody Melody with plus 10% attack would work in pl replacement of the Extreme Magic Bow. You just need to be aware that in that case, you can't take any melee attacks. You could also use, for the matter, the Hydra's Bow, right? Because it'll also give plus 10% attack, and then before attacking, you have a chance to reduce the enemy's damage dealt. So, yeah. Hydra Bow, Bloody Melody, it would be, I guess, decent replacements, but you really do need an Extreme Magic Bow. Armor. Her best armor is very obvious, Last Rites, because she can use Light Armors, and Last Rites has that chance of reducing damage taken by 40%. That's huge. So, you know, just right away, you want a Last Rites for her. There's no real other alternative. You know, you could use, let's say, the other light armor, such as, I don't know, let's say Gargoyle Jacket, right? That would be an okay replacement. But again, this would increase defense by 15%, and her defense value is not that high in the first place. So it's not a huge increase for her. Other than that, you could also choose, if you really don't have a last rights, a Monkey King's Vest would be a decent replacement as well. Because when attacked, your attack and crit hit chance are both increased by 15%. This 15% will, once again, give you a better chance of one-shotting any attacker. So that, you know, Zerida's probably going to die, but she'll take down the attacker with her in PvP. So there we go. That's the armor choices. Helmet. Helmet for her is kind of interesting, because in her demon class, she can actually wear the, de you know, the mage helmets, right? So, one option that I actually don't recommend would be Odin's Battle Helm. Because when you eliminate an enemy on this turn, 
you can dispel up to 5 buffs from the enemy within 3 blocks after taking action. It's 1 just at level 1. At level 50, it becomes 5 buffs being dispelled. Right? So what this almost means is you kill off an enemy and you remove the faction buff from another enemy, making them much weaker. The problem with this is you have to remain within 3 blocks of that second enemy. That's not easy. So that's why I personally don't recommend Odin's Battle Helm. Instead, I would probably recommend one of the following. The first option is King's Crown if you have an extra one. Because with the King's Crown and Sly Stride, Zerda has the ability to attack and retreat. With her retreat, King's Crown can allow you to buff up another ally to give them 20% extra damage for one turn. So that's why King's Crown would be a great choice. Of course, there's a lot of characters who want King's Crown, so if you don't have another King's Crown to give Zerida, well, you can give her this, Najord's Feathered Crown. The effect of this one is that first, hit points is increased by 10%. Second, when battling against units with less hit points, defense and magic defense are increased by 15%. What this really kicks in against is if you are fighting against a demon Zerida, who also has the Alhazard Bloodthirster. Because Alhazard Bloodthirster kills off all your soldiers, right? So that means Najord's Feathered Crown is guaranteed to kick in when you fight against that enemy Zerida. With 15% more defense, 15% more match defense, and 10% more hit points, you have a chance of surviving the attack from the enemy Zerida, while their Zerida will die. So, that's why Najord's Feathered Crown can be one of her best helmets. So either one, Najor's Feathered Crown, King's Crown. Those are my preferred helmets for her. And finally, we'll talk about accessory. An accessory is obvious. Just like everyone else, ideally you want an Overlord badge on your Zerida. So she cannot lose, she can't be affected by attack reductions or mobility reductions, right? And she'll also get plus 5% to all stats. But once again, <laughs> Overlord's badges are pretty rare. There's no guarantee that you'll have one. So generally speaking, the, if you don't have an Overlord's badge for her, give her an attack accessory, preferably with plus attack and plus hit points. So the best one, the ones that have this are, for example, Lone Star Amulet, right? Which actually works for Zerida reasonably well because when she's attacking, right? Uh, there would be no friendly unit within two blocks. The problem here is that Lone Star Amulet will not kick in if she gets attacked, because she's usually defending with allies close by. So the this, this specific scenario where this would be an issue is, it, again, Zerida against Zerida. You attack, slide, slide stride, retreat back to, let's say, your tank's guard range. The enemy Zerida then attacks your Zerida, and Lone Star Amulet will not give 10% attack or defense to her. So that is a big problem. But other than that, so other than Lone Star Amulet, the other accessories you can use would be... I'm just looking for it right now. Where is it? Slayer's Emblem, wherever it is. For some reason, I can't find it. Ha, here it is. Slayer's Emblem. Plus hit points, plus attack. Attack increase 8%. And when battling against flyers, attack is increased by another 12%. So why is this considered a decent replacement accessory? Well, a lot of the enemies you're going to be fighting will have flyer soldiers, like Leon, like Cherry, you know. So having a Slayer's Emblem, it always helps. You'll do more damage that way. That's basically it. Um... The Google Sheet recommended, I believe it was the Judge's Talisman, okay? Because the Judge's Talisman increases holy da increases damage against holy units by 12%. It gives 8% attack. The problem with Judge's Talisman, and I cannot agree with the uh, article at all, is because A, this one increases attack and defense. It doesn't increase attack and hit points. That's a, one problem. The second problem is against holy units, you don't need the 12% additional attack to kill off holy units, okay? If you were attacking a holy unit, you'll one-shot them. 
the exception to one-shotting them is when they have Shrine Maidens, right? And in the case of Shrine Maidens, they reduce physical damage by 75%. Your 12% additional holy damage will not kill off the Shrine Maidens, okay? Or it won't kill off the enemy hero if the Shrine Maidens are at 100% hit points. So that's why I can't recommend uh, Judge's Talisman. The what I mean, that is, yeah, that really sums it up. The only time where this might come into effect is if you were attacking a Chloe who, was, who had Zealots as her soldiers. Then, in this case, it would help. Uh, so there is that consideration. The only other case where it could potentially help would be if you were attacking Lenin. But again, I don't think you need the Judge's Talisman to take down Leaden. So there you go. That is everything about Zerida and her equipment. So to sum it up once more, if you're just looking for her best equipment, it would be Extreme Magic Bow, um, Last Rites for armor, King's Crown or Najord's Feathered Crown for helmet, and accessory is Overlord's Badge. All right, so that's everything. Thanks. Oh, there is one last thing I forgot to mention, isn't there? Which is the enchant on the equipment. And because Zerida is about crit hit and crit damage increase and so on, what you want is an enchant that increases the crit rate. So there's two options for that. And there are the yellow enchants. The first one is Meteor, where when you're attacking units with hit points above 60%, all damage dealt after entering battle increased by 20%. In my opinion, that's the best one. Okay, Crit 7% and plus 20% damage when entering battle. The alternative is Blazing Sun. Crit 7% and when you do a crit hit, you get plus 25% damage. So this one offers a bit more damage, 5% more damage when you do a crit hit. But this one is, I guess, more general purpose in that you're always guaranteed plus 20% damage. Take your pick. I personally like Meteor more but you can always use Blazing Sun. So that is everything. I hope you found this video useful. And on that note, Nitro out.